It's Mission Sunday. It's Mission Sunday. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Calvary. My name is Joe Whitmer. I'm one of the pastors here. And I know that we've been in our Overcomer series of Revelation for the past three weeks. And we are going to pick that back up next week. But this week... This week, we get to talk about something beautiful and glorious. We get to talk about missions and outreach and sharing the gospel with the world. Because today is Calvary's first time in a long time, Mission Sunday. And what we want to do this morning, that's great. Yes, we can clap because Mission Sunday is good. We want to communicate with you our heart for getting outside these walls and around the world and then reveal to you some ways that you can get involved with our missions, with the mission that God has for us. And today, after our service, we're going to have some time in the commons together. After the service, we have groups of people there that are going to help you find out more about our global partners and discover ways you might be able to jump in. Now, I get 17 minutes this morning to share the motivation, the mission, and the means of outreach. So I'm going to have to talk twice as fast as normal. But I am going to briefly share with you a biblical foundation for mission that drives Calvary's heart for the level of involvement that we're at. And I hope that foundation doesn't just stay with our outreach staff, but that becomes your heart as well. And after I'm done, our director of outreach, Mel Parker, is going to come up and she's going to share some specifics of missions. What are we doing and who are we doing that with? And how can you learn more or do more to be a part of what God's mission is in the world and what Calvary is doing? Now, the beauty of being in the book of Revelation right now as a church is that that book of Revelation, that book of the Bible, is the result of missions. God's been at work throughout all of history, and it's all going to come together and culminate in the book of Revelation. If you look, and we'll be there in a couple weeks, in Revelation chapter 7, in verse 9, it says this. It says, After this I looked... And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing before the throne, before the Lamb who is Jesus. Now, can you see that in your mind? Imagine, because you're going to be there one day if you've responded to the gospel. You're going to be there one day where there will be this innumerable amount of people as far as you can see. And those people don't look just like us. They look like different tongues and tribes and languages and colors and peoples. And all of them are going to be there. And they're going to be standing in front of Jesus and worshiping him. And that is a result of this, of mission. This is for that Throughout history, God has always been at work to accomplish his plan to redeem an undeserving people who will be able to enjoy his infinite grace and goodness for all of eternity. Undeserving people rescued and reconciled to God from every tongue, tribe, and nation. They're celebrating the one who meets every desire for security and love and satisfaction and significance. They're enjoying the one who has answered the problem of sin, suffering, and pain. The one who wipes away every tear. Missions is driving to that. And we see it happen in Revelation. So when's that going to happen is the question. When do we get to that? Well, the disciples asked that same question. And in Matthew 24, 3, they asked Jesus, they said, Tell us, Lord, what shall be the sign of your coming and the close of the age? And then Jesus goes on to explain that this age, this time that we're in right now, the church age, will last until Jesus returns. And he lets them know that evil will continue to prosper. Wars will continue to happen. There will be disasters. Men will continue to hate. The picture's pretty dark. 
there will be an intensification of evil, but God has not abandoned this age to the evil one. Satan experienced his decisive defeat at the cross, and we as Christians overcome him by the blood of Jesus and the power of the gospel. But then listen carefully where Jesus lands at the end of Matthew 24 in verse 14. He says this. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. That gives me like goosebumps still today. I'm not even joking. Every time I say that, I'm like, yes. That picture is coming when all the nations have heard the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. When the church has finished its task, when the mission of God has been fulfilled, when everyone has heard the gospel, Jesus comes again. God's mission has always been about calling people to himself. Jesus declared that that was his purpose on the earth, continuing what God had started. Luke 19.10 says, the son of man, that's Jesus, I, he's saying, came to seek and to save the lost. So then God's mission is Jesus' mission, and that becomes our mission when Jesus gives us the Great Commission, right? In Matthew 28, go and make disciples. That commission was then empowered by God the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in Acts 2, which we just went through last year, the book of Acts. We have the mission of God. We have the means for missions through the Spirit of God, So then what is the motivation? Why do we not do missions? Because what started out as a people launched out by the Holy Spirit on fire with the gospel and the church spread has subtly slipped back into a bunch of people sitting safely in services, compartmentalizing their faith, not living on fire or risking or going or passionately being ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And instead of producing people who are powerful and fearless, willing to go near and far, we reassure one another that maybe God just wants us to do what's safest for our families or best for our comfort. And we can spend 20 years in groups and Bible studies before we step out and lead or do anything risky for the sake of the gospel. By the grace of God and by boldness and courage and the power of the Holy Spirit, we are capable and we as Christians are meant for so much more. This morning, I do not want to put a guilt trip on the church as a whole. I don't want to have Calvary or its individual members get beat up and feel like we just have to muster up and do some more stuff. I do see progress, Calvary. I see the progress in you, in us. I have seen our evangelism and our invite culture grow here as a church. And I've seen you share the gospel with others through the context of relationships and sharing the goodness of God. But my heartbeat as a pastor of outreach, I know the passion of our outreach department is that there is so much more that can be done And there's so much more joy and happiness in that doing that can be experienced. One of my favorite stories about outreach over the last two years is a friend of mine. I'm not going to give you his name, but I have known him for a very long time, a very good friend. And we were talking two years ago, and he had never been on a missions trip. And I said, you're going to New York City with me. And he's like, I don't know. I said, no, no, no. I'm going to get your wife, and she's going to convince you, and we're going to work together, and we're going to get you on on the trip to New York. And so he did. He came, and he literally told people when they asked, why are you going to New York? Because Joe made me, right? (laughs) And we got to New York, and the first day, we kind of walk in New York City to kind of get used to the culture. And he says, Joe, I'm going to be honest with you. I got some preconceptions here about what this is and why we're doing this and why people are like this and why all the things that are happening. And then incrementally, day by day by day, you just see little things happening with him. 
And then by the end of the trip, we're in the airport, and he goes, my mind is completely blown. To see God working in those people and understanding that my preconceptions about who those people were and why they were in the situation that they were in has completely changed. And then one year later, this guy goes to Greece. And he sees a global God doing this on a global scale with people who love Jesus in different global contexts. And they're reaching into the, nine, the 1040 window. And these amazing things are happening. And he comes back and I just see a countenance change, an understanding change, and a passion and joy and happiness change that affected him, it affected his wife, it affected his children, and it affected his relationships. And I was like, you get it! You get it when you go and you see God working and the gospel spreading, not just in America because God bless America, but God is actually blessing all the nations of the world in his mission to revive and call to himself all the tribes, all the tongues, all the nations. You can't help but be like, wow. Loved ones, just like my friend, your happiness your joy, your experiencing the Holy Spirit is rooted in something so much bigger than a sports team or a college that your kid goes to or some family drama or your retirement package. <coughs> God is at work in this world. And he's invited you and me to do something so meaningful that our happiness and our joy is inextricably connected to and dependent on it. Joining him in what he is doing in this world will bring you to the cusp of everything that deep in your soul you really long for and are desperately shouting to be a part of. So again, my question is this morning, what's the motivation? Well, the motivation comes partly from that. But how do we, as Josh says, get outside the walls so that that blessing that God has given us doesn't terminate on us, but flows through us to other people? To live out truly that diagram that we've shown a few times here at church, where the pathway of the disciple is that you connect, you grow, and you serve. You're here, you're connected. Maybe here online, you're connecting with Calvary. And that grow part is so important that you're becoming a growing disciple. That's what children's and students and young adults and small groups and Sunday mornings and worship and care ministries and all of those things are meant to do is to develop and grow us as disciples who see God and then are caused and forced and driven and passionately pushed to serve. And anytime you hear Josh say serve and hopefully the other pastors, what that means is that you are on mission for God. You are on mission with God. So that does mean serving here in the ministries of Calvary, but it also means branching off and being on mission in your neighborhoods and in your workplaces and in the rest of the world to go and see and be a part of what God is doing in missions. Now, that motivation for that does come from who God is, but then it also comes all the way back. We see it in Revelation, what's going to happen, but then all the way back to Deuteronomy 6. And this is when Israel was exodus from Egypt, and as they are going out, this is what God gives them. Deuteronomy 6, this is what's known as the Shema, which means hear. And this is what it says in verse 4. It says, Shema, or listen, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That should remind you of Jesus' statement of the greatest commandment in Matthew 22. These words I am giving you today are to be in your heart. They are motivators. They're deeply rooted understandings. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house, when, when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, and when you get up. Bind them on a sign on your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your city gates. In other words, what this is saying is everywhere you go, everything you think, everything you see or do or talk about is influenced by this idea that hear, O Israel, the Lord, Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. 
This mission was laid out for the first time to Israel as they were sent out. Before they got to the promised land, they had to embrace the promised mission. And I don't have a near enough time to dive into the implications and applications of the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But suffice it to say, it means that nothing else gets to compete or come close to God. No other imitation gods, idols, ideas, rulers, kings, developments, countries, feelings, or even some of our fruitfulness comes before God. God is above it all, and his mission is clear and complete and, un, un, and, un, abs, and absolute. Understanding who God is, as we grow as disciples, we are understanding more about how holy and awesome and incredible and good and kind and just and fair and jealous and all of the things about God. We're growing in that understanding so that mind seeps into our heart and that heart overflows into our life. What we're going to sing in a minute, stir a passion up in me, let it overflow. And that overflowing then is exactly what it says. As you get up, as you lie down, talk about your kids, as you're in your house, as you're out of your house, everywhere you go, that understanding then pours out of you and you have to tell everybody and anybody and somebody about it. And then... When that message of how good and great God is reaches everybody, then the end, the revelation of Jesus Christ that we are in the beginning of understanding will come. That's missions. So what's our motivation from the beginning? We are motivated to participate in the mission of God because of and by the glory of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We are motivated by the greatness of God throughout all of history leading to all of eternity and we're empowered by that. We're motivated to do that as the Holy Spirit grows us in our discipleship. The mission was predicated by God it started with Israel, was perfectly pictured in Christ, was passed down to the disciples, was empowered by the Spirit in Acts 2, and then it was handed to the church, and now it is resting on you and me today. The church and its people must retain and remain in the mission of God to call people to himself, to share the gospel to be a missional church. Alan Hirsch in his book, The Forgotten Ways, says it this way. I love this. A missional church is a community of God's people that defines itself and organizes its life around its real purpose of being an agent of God's mission to the world. The church's true and authentic organizing principle is mission. When the church is in mission, it is the true church. The church itself is not only a product of mission, which means that somewhere back in the 1800s, somebody heard the gospel, got called to Valparaiso, Indiana. They shared the gospel. They shared the gospel. They were on mission, and eventually they shared the gospel with somebody said, we have to start a church. That founded Calvary Church. Calvary Church shared the gospel. Other people came to Calvary Church. Calvary Church is going, growing, but it's not a about just Calvary Church. It's about also going out. So we are a product of that mission. The church itself is not only a product of that mission, but it is obligated and destined to extend that mission by whatever means possible. The mission of God flows directly through every believer in every community of faith that adheres to Jesus. And to obstruct this is to block God's purposes in and through his people. Did you hear that one phrase? By any means possible. In and through his people and the church. So you as his people, what means are possible for you? What is the spirit going to call you to do as it relates to the mission of God and sharing the gospel? Part of our directive as an outreach team is to explore all of the means that are possible for us. And there are a lot of means out there. Trust me, a lot. 
Mel and Kelly and Ellen and the elders and the staff and I are constantly looking at those meetings, discovering what is possible for Calvary. And without stealing too much of Mel's thunder when she comes in a moment, we are in the United States of America. We're in South America. We're in Africa. And we are currently developing more means to reach what missions vernacular is called UPGs. And that stands for unreached people groups. Why UPGs? Because that is connected to Revelation. When all the unreached people groups have heard, those who have not yet heard, understand and hear the gospel of the kingdom preached, then the end will come and we get to experience all the glory and goodness and power and majesty for all of eternity with Jesus. Getting to the gospel to those who have not heard should be part of every church's outreach. Okay. So the true church is a missional church. Thank you, Calvary, for serving as a missional church, for being a part of the mission to share the gospel across the street and around the world through your time, your efforts, your going, and your giving. And unashamedly, I will ask, go and give to the gospel going forward and give financially to the gospel going forward. Today, we have an opportunity to do that. Everything given above and beyond our normal budgeted amount gets to go to missions, and everything designated in Mission Sunday gets to go to missions, and that just means we have more means that are possible for us to go toward that end shall come. I could probably talk about three or four days about the biblical foundation, about the mountain of motivation, and the joyful experience that is a part of mission. And my heart for you guys is this, that that passion would be stirred up in you. You would see a good and great glorious God and be driven to go and tell somebody about that. But I want to make time for specifics. I want you to hear from another team member of ours, from the amazing Mel Parker, about what God is doing and how the mission is going forward here at Calvary and ways that you can get involved. So let me pray, and she's going to come and share some specifics. God, would you stir that passion up in us? Would you drive us forward by the power of the Spirit with the motivation of how good and amazing you are? God, we can't do that work. Your Spirit is the one who brings that kind of work into our lives. And so God, do what you will for each of us and allow us to continue to be missional in our church, we pray in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, Calvary Church. I'm excited to get to share with you briefly this morning of something of what God is doing through our partners around the world and how you can become more connected with missions. Just by way of introduction, uh, I was not always excited about missions. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, and we had the occasional missionary pass through whilst on furlough. And as a child, I thought they smelled a bit funny. Um, they dressed a bit oddly, and I noticed that their visits to our church coincided with us having an extremely reduced Sunday lunch of bread and cheese uh, and having to sit through a slideshow of faraway places and faces and while our stomachs growled. Um, I was not a big fan. Um, as I grew up, I felt very called to serve God in England, where I was from, and it was only in my early 20s um, when I was forced to travel to the Middle East um, as part of my job that God grabbed my heart for his world and opened my eyes. I ended up serving as a missionary teacher in Lebanon for 14 years and finding a British husband. And I'm so thankful to God, not just for my husband, but for loving me enough to expand my limited horizons and my understanding and experience of him as a result. Um, so on to Calvary Outreach. We have four focus areas, as Joe has already introduced. We have Africa, we have Latin America, we have the US, and we have our unreached peoples. So we're going to whiz through all four of those in the next few minutes. So starting off with our Africa focus, um, first partner that I'd like to, to draw your attention to is Every Child Ministries. 
They are led by our very own Mark Lucky. Here, he's a member here at Calvary. Uh, we have been supporting their work in Uganda for a number of years and are currently exploring with them what it would look like for Calvary to partner with a village community. Through this partnership, we would work to equip and enable the community to become independent, thriving, and gospel-centered over the next seven or eight years. And our participation in that would be determined by those on the ground in Uganda, but could include such things as training pastors, teachers, healthcare workers, and sponsoring their family empowerment program. So with that in mind, we are preparing and planning to send a team over to Uganda in 2025. Our other main partner in the Africa focus is HopeCo. HopeCo have a large project caring for over 500 children each day in Tanzania. They have um, a safe house in Kenya, caring for child victims of abuse and trafficking. They have a woman's empowerment program. And more recently, they've begun working with the community in Mitaboni, Kenya. So Calvary has had links with this community for over 10 years, and we are super encouraged that God continues to keep us connected with his work there. So we're hoping to send a team of guys there in the fall. The third thing I'd like to mention from our Africa focus area is our one and only super duper Calvary missionary, Brenda Smith, who I'm sure will be met, uh, known to many of you. She serves with Hope Co. and is currently back in the US caring for her parents. Uh, Brenda has a big heart for the people of Africa and has been used by God in sharing his work in her own life with the women and children there. And we're excited to see what God has for her as she returns to reconnect with ministry there and love her willingness to sacrificially respond to God's call to go and make disciples of all nations. If you're interested in sponsoring a family through ECM or a child at Mitaboni or helping to support Brenda, um, please visit those tables that Joe mentioned in the, in the commons after the service. And you could meet Brenda too. Um, so on to our second focus area, which is Latin America. This is a little nearer to home and a newer focus for Calvary. Um, having connected with Ocean's Edge Ministries last year, our first team to Costa Rica just arrived back last Sunday. And the ministry there provides accommodation and connection with a variety of local outreach projects um, in partnership with the local church. So um, from homeless feeding programs, surfing outreach, prayer walking, and outreach to the local businesses and community. There's a lot there to be uh, connected with. Uh, the team are in the commons this morning and would love to tell you more about what they were doing and the opportunities Calvary has to partner there. And our students will also be going there this summer, so we're excited for them. Even more recently, we've developed some good connections with ministry in Peru. Uh, Matt and I have friends serving there, and Calvary staff um, were able to meet up with them last fall. A few weeks ago, we were asked by them um, if we could send a team of ladies to facilitate a retreat for 40 missionary women from all over Peru this fall. Um, we're thankful for that amazing opportunity. And we uh, and also thankful that we already have um, a full team of women for that trip. How cool is that? Our next focus area is here in the U.S. Um, we currently partner with City Relief, as Joe mentioned, in New York, a fantastic, well-established, well-run ministry that provides um, the homeless community of New York with practical help and spiritual hope through the gospel. Teams from Calvary. Uh, get to serve alongside the team there at City Relief for a very cross-cultural experience um, as they serve food and give out clothing and chat and pray with people. And we're in the process of developing opportunities uh, for a similar ministry, connections in Chicago and LA, so watch this space. Our final focus area we've called unreached people groups. Um, and this area of focus has been called the 1040 window historically, and, and covers an area that you can see on the map from 10 degrees to 40 degrees north latitude. It covers North America, the Middle East, Asia, 
Um, this area contains 50% of the world's population and 97% of unreached people in the world. And yet, 2% of America's missions donations go to this area, 2%. And 3% of missionaries worldwide are working in this area. That's mind-blowing. That's a lot of people who don't know anybody that loves Jesus, that have never heard of him. Calvary currently has two partners working in this area, and for security reasons, I will only name one of them. Our partners in Greece, AMG, are working tirelessly to share the gospel with Greek nationals and the large refugee population in the country. Uh, many people from the Middle East um, traveled there to escape conflicts um, and have been able to hear and respond to the gospel, which they may never have heard in their home countries. Um, the Calvary team that traveled there last fall was so encouraged to see a small part of what God is doing and to hear how the gospel is also now being shared back into some of those closed countries in the Middle East. It's dangerous work for those involved. And you can find out more from our team uh, in the commons after the service. Our other project in Asia, in that region, is extremely strategic as our partners train pastors and evangelists to go where Western missionaries can't go to preach the gospel and plant churches across the region. Uh, there's a lot of persecution of Christians in this region where other religions dominate. But God is at work and his kingdom is advancing as his people courageously share his love. Many of us may never go to this region, but our prayers and support of God's people who live there is vital in reaching the unreached. We're currently prayerfully seeking God's guidance for a connection we have with a pastor of an underground church in Myanmar, another very gospel-resistant country in that 1040 region. Please pray with us for God to use us as a church to be an encouragement to that pastor and his congregation as they share the hope they have in Jesus, a very great risk. So our God is at work around his world. This is just some of what he's doing, transforming lives through the gospel. How can you help? I'm glad you asked, as Josh would say. Here's some of the ways that you can get involved. The first thing, most importantly, is to, through prayer. Uh, thank you to many of you who came and prayed for our partners during our week of unbroken prayer in the chapel. Uh, this morning, we have prayer cards for you in the commons, one for each area of focus. Uh, please take those home and put them somewhere uh, that you'll be reminded to pray for our partners. So please be praying. Secondly, you can register for our next School of Missions on Saturday, April the 27th. Um, we get to dive more deeply into the when, where, why, what, and how of missions. Um, and this is a must for anyone considering going on a Calvary Go team in the next year. Come on your own or bring a small group along and come together. Be great. Another way um, would be to join a Go team trip. Actually pray about, does God actually want me to go somewhere other than the building here? Be on the lookout later this year for something else we're going to be doing as well called virtual visits. Um, this is uh, an opportunity that will give you a chance to find out more um, about specific ministries we support and interact with our partners over Zoom. So scripture says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Can I encourage you this morning to think about and to pray about what are your next steps outward to a world that needs to hear towards the lost towards the least what would God have you do it's easy to say here I am Lord send someone else that's the comfortable option but as we remember and worship a God who has reached out to us in love may we be his people that take that love and share it with the world around us.